Assume the feeling of being that which you want to be and observe the results. Neville Goddard There is no better way to save yourself than saving money every day. Compound interest can do wonders. Hard times will always reveal true friends. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Wayne Gretzky Being defeated is often a temporary condition. Giving up is what makes it permanent. People are more selfish than you think they are. It's not what happens to you that determines how far you will go in life. It is how you handle what happens to you. Zig Ziglar One who not often, nor without some great necessity tending to some public good, mindeth what any other either speaks, or doth, or purposeth, for those things only that are in his own power, or that are truly his own, are the objects of his employments, and his thoughts are ever taken up with those things, which of the whole universe are by the fates or providence destinated and appropriated unto himself, those things that are his own, and in his own power he himself takes order, for that they be good. And as for those that happen unto him, he believes them to be so. For that lot and portion which is assigned to everyone, as it is unavoidable and necessary, so is it always profitable. He remembers besides that whatsoever partakes of reason is akin unto him, and that to care for all men generally is agreeing to the nature of a man. But as for honor and praise, that they ought not generally to be admitted and accepted of from all, but from such only, who live according to nature. As for them that do not, what manner of men they be at home or abroad, day or night, how condition themselves with what manner of conditions, or with men of what conditions they moil and pass away the time together, he knoweth and remembers. Right well, he therefore regards not such praise and approbation as proceeding from them who cannot like and approve themselves. People often confuse stress with responsibility. If someone wants to offend you greatly, then it is even worse for him. Honesty is the first chapter in the Book of Wisdom. Thomas Jefferson Make peace with your past, so it won't screw up the present. Doubt can only be removed by action. Identify your problems, but give your power and energy to solutions. Tony Robbins Whatsoever any man either doth or saith, thou must be good, not for any man's sake, but for thine own nature's sake, as if either gold or the emerald or purple should ever be saying to themselves, Whatsoever any man either doth or saith, I must still be an emerald, and I must keep my color. New beginnings are disguised as painful endings. It's a slow process, but quitting won't speed it up. Do not fear death. Resentment and complaint are appropriate neither for oneself nor others. Do nothing that is of no use. Miyamoto Musashi Problems cannot be solved with the same level of thinking that created them.
If you are impatient, life will always be harder. Patience can do wonders. The only thing that exists is the self, and it is beyond all concepts. Papaji. If my present apprehension of the object be right, and my present action charitable, and this, towards whatsoever doth proceed from God, be my present disposition, to be well pleased with it, it sufficeth. If it keeps you happy, keep it quiet. You can overcome bad habits only today, not tomorrow. The best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. Bhagavad Gita Begin at once to live and count each separate day as a separate life. If a man could have half of his wishes, he would double his troubles. The quality of your life is the quality of your relationships. Tony Robbins Let not that chief commanding part of thy soul be ever subject to any variation through any corporal, either pain or pleasure, neither suffer it to be mixed with these, but let it both circumscribe itself and confine those affections to their own proper parts and members. But if at any time they do reflect and rebound upon the mind and understanding, as in an united and compacted body it must needs, then must thou not go about to resist sense and feeling, it being natural. However, let not thy understanding to this natural sense and feeling, which whether unto our flesh pleasant or painful, is unto us nothing properly, add an opinion of either good or bad, and all is well. Avoid people who use their pain as an excuse to hurt you. Don't show your weaknesses. People will enjoy the show. De omnibus dubitandum, everything must be doubted. Aristotle. Letting go means to come to the realization that some people are a part of your history, but not a part of your destiny. Buy real estate, land, anything you can afford. The less possessions you own, the happier and less burden you will have in your life. You are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Jim Rohn From some high place as it were to look down, and to behold here flocks and their sacrifices without number, and all kind of navigation, some in a rough and stormy sea, and some in a calm, the general differences or different estates of things, some that are now first upon being, the several and mutual relations of those things that are together, and some other things that are at their last, their lives also, who were long ago, and theirs who shall be hereafter, and the present estate and life of those many nations of barbarians that are now in the world, thou must likewise consider in thy mind, and how many there be, who never so much as heard of thy name, how many that will soon forget it? How many who but even now did commend thee, within a very little while perchance will speak ill of thee, so that neither fame, nor honor, nor anything else that this world doth afford, is worth the while? The sum then of all, whatsoever doth happen unto thee, whereof God is the cause, to accept it contentedly, whatsoever thou doest, whereof thou thyself art the cause, to do it justly, 
which will be if both in thy resolution and in thy action thou have no further end than to do good unto others as being that which by thy natural constitution as a man thou art bound unto. Don't let people know too much about you. Just trust your instincts. Gut feelings can sometimes save you from big troubles. Do not let anyone tell you you can't. They're showing you their limits, not yours. The best way to overcome the suffering of life is to stop clinging to the things of life. Buddha It is a wretched state to be pleased with one's limits. You will find the key to success under the alarm clock. Be humble, or you will get humbled. Jocko Willink Of Natural Affection When he was visited by one of the magistrates, Epictetus inquired of him about several particulars and asked if he had children and a wife. The man replied that he had, and Epictetus inquired further how he felt under the circumstances. Miserable, the man said. Then Epictetus asked in what respect, for men do not marry and beget children in order to be wretched, but rather to be happy. But I, the man replied, am so wretched about my children that lately, when my little daughter was sick and was supposed to be in danger, I could not endure to stay with her, but I left home till a person sent me news that she had recovered. Well then, said Epictetus, do you think that you acted right? I acted naturally, the man replied, but convince me of this, that you acted naturally, and I will convince you that everything which takes place according to nature takes place rightly. This is the case, said the man, with all or at least most fathers. I do not deny that, but the matter about which we are inquiring is whether such behavior is right, for in respect to this matter, we must say that tumors also come for the good of the body, because they do come. And generally we must say that to do wrong is natural, because nearly all, or at least most of us, do wrong. Do you show me then how your behavior is natural? I cannot, he said. But do you rather show me how it is not according to nature and is not rightly done? Well, said Epictetus, if we were inquiring about white and black, what criterion should we employ for distinguishing between them? The sight, he said. And if about hot and cold and hard and soft, what criterion? The touch. Well then, since we are inquiring about things which are according to nature, and those which are done rightly or not rightly, what kind of criterion do you think that we should employ? I do not know, he said, and yet not to know the criterion of colors and smells, and also of tastes, is perhaps no great harm. But if a man do not know the criterion of good and bad, and of things according to nature and contrary to nature, does this seem to you a small harm? The greatest harm, come tell me, do all things which seem to some persons to be good and becoming rightly appear such? And at present, as to Jews and Syrians and Egyptians and Romans, is it possible that the opinions of all of them in respect to food are right? How is it possible? He said. Well, I suppose it is absolutely necessary that, if the opinions of the Egyptians are right, the opinions of the rest must be wrong. If the opinions of the Jews are right, those of the rest cannot be right. Certainly. But where there is ignorance, there also there is want of learning and training in things which are necessary. He assented to this. You then, said Epictetus, since you know this, for the future will employ yourself seriously about nothing else, 
and will apply your mind to nothing else than to learn the criterion of things which are according to nature, and by using it also to determine each several thing. But in the present matter I have so much as this to aid you toward what you wish. Does affection to those of your family appear to you to be according to nature and to be good? Certainly. Well, is such affection natural and good, and is a thing consistent with reason not good? By no means. Is then that which is consistent with reason in contradiction with affection? I think not. You are right, for if it is otherwise, it is necessary that one of the contradictions being according to nature, the other must be contrary to nature. Is it not so? It is, he said. Whatever then we shall discover to be at the same time affectionate and also consistent with reason, this we confidently declare to be right and good, agreed. Well then, to leave your sick child and to go away is not reasonable and I suppose that you will not say that it is, but it remains for us to inquire if it is consistent with affection. Yes, let us consider. Did you then, since you had an affectionate disposition to your child, do right when you ran off and left her? And has the mother no affection for the child? Certainly she has. Ought then the mother also to have left her, or ought she not? She ought not. And the nurse, does she love her? She does. Ought then she also to have left her? By no means. And the pedagogue, does he not love her? He does love her. Ought then he also to have deserted her? And so should the child have been left alone and without help on account of the great affection of you, the parents, and of those about her, or should she have died in the hands of those who neither loved her nor cared for her? Certainly not. Now this is unfair and unreasonable, not to allow those who have equal affection with yourself to do what you think to be proper for yourself to do, because you have affection. It is absurd. Come then, if you were sick, would you wish your relations to be so affectionate? and all the rest, children and wife, as to leave you alone and deserted? By no means. And would you wish to be so loved by your own, that through their excessive affection you would always be left alone in sickness? Or for this reason would you rather pray, if it were possible, to be loved by your enemies and deserted by them? But if this is so, it results that your behavior was not at all an affectionate act, well then, was it nothing which moved you and induced you to desert your child? And how is that possible? But it might be something of the kind which moved a man at Rome to wrap up his head while a horse was running which he favored. And when contrary to expectation the horse won, he required sponges to recover from his fainting fit. What then is the thing which moved? The exact discussion of this does not belong to the present occasion, perhaps, but it is enough to be convinced of this. If what the philosophers say is true, that we must not look for it anywhere without. But in all cases it is one and the same thing which is the cause of our doing or not doing something, of saying or not saying something, of being elated or depressed, of avoiding anything or pursuing the very thing which is now the cause to me and to you, to you of coming to me and sitting and hearing, and to me of saying what I do say. And what is this? Is it any other than our will to do so? No other. But if we had willed otherwise, what else should we have been doing than that which we willed to do? This then was the cause of Achilles' lamentation, not the death of Patroclus, for another man does not behave thus on the death of his companion, but it was because he chose to do so. And to you this was the very cause of your then running away, that you chose to do so. And on the other side, if you should stay with her, the reason will be the same. And now you are going to Rome because you choose. 
and if you should change your mind, you will not go thither. And in a word, neither death nor exile nor pain nor anything of the kind is the cause of our doing anything or not doing, but our own opinions and our wills. Do I convince you of this or not? You do convince me. Such then as the causes are in each case, such also are the effects. When then we are doing anything not rightly, from this day we shall impute it to nothing else than to the will from which we have done it. And it is that which we shall endeavor to take away, and to extirpate more than the tumors and abscesses out of the body. And in like manner we shall give the same account of the cause of the things which we do right. And we shall no longer allege as causes of any evil to us, either slave or neighbor, or wife or children being persuaded that if we do not think things to he what we do think them to be, we do not the acts which follow from such opinions, and as to thinking or not thinking, that is in our power and not in externals. It is so, he said. From this day then we shall inquire into and examine nothing else, what its quality is or its state, neither land nor slaves nor horses nor dogs, nothing else than opinions. I hope so. You see then that you must become a scholasticus, an animal whom all ridicule, if you really intend to make an examination of your own opinions, and that this is not the work of one hour or day, you know yourself. Holding grudges will never harm the people you hate, only you. Of this one thing, make sure against your dying day that your faults die before you do. To understand everything is to forgive everything. Buddha If nobody helps you, do it alone. If it is not right, do not do it. If it is not true, do not say it. To find the self, you must transcend the dualities of the mind. Nisargadatta Maharaj Alexander of Macedon, and he that dressed his mules, when once dead, both came to one. For either they were both resumed into those original rational essences from whence all things in the world are propagated, or both after one fashion were scattered into atoms. We are all the bad guy in someone's story. To bear trials with a calm mind robs misfortune of its strength and burden. The greatest wealth is to live content with little. Buddha Do not put off important medical checkups. If someone shows you who they are, believe them the first time. The present moment is filled with joy and happiness. If you are attentive, you will see it. Tish Nathan. Asia, Europe, what are they but as corners of the whole world, of which the whole sea is but as one drop, and the great Mount Athos, but as a clod, as all present time is but as one point of eternity. All petty things, all things that are soon altered soon perished, and all things come from one beginning, either all severally and particularly deliberated and resolved upon by the general ruler and governor of all, or all by necessary consequence, so that the dreadful hiatus of a gaping lion and all poison and all hurtful things are but, as the thorn and the mire, the necessary consequences of goodly fair things. Think not of these, therefore, 
as things contrary to those which thou dost much honor and respect, but consider in thy mind the true fountain of all. Learn from what people do, not from what they tell you. No one can make you feel inferior without your consent. The man who moves a mountain begins by carrying away small stones. Confucius. One day all those late nights and early mornings will pay off. The more you spend clinging to the past, the less likely your future will be any brighter. Sometimes you have to go through the mud to get to the good stuff. David Goggins To desire things impossible is the part of a madman, but it is a thing impossible that wicked man should not commit some such things. Neither doth anything happen to any man, which in the ordinary course of nature as natural unto him doth not happen. Again, the same things happen unto others also. And truly, if either he that is ignorant that such a thing hath happened unto him, or he that is ambitious to be commended for his magnanimity can be patient and is not grieved, is it not a grievous thing that either ignorance or a vain desire to please and to be commended should be more powerful and effectual than true prudence? As for the things themselves, they touch not the soul, neither can they have any access unto it, neither can they of themselves any ways either affect it or move it, for she herself alone can affect and move herself, and according as the dogmata and opinions are, which she doth vouchsafe herself. So are those things which, as accessories, have any coexistence with her. Fear of death increases in exact proportion to increase in wealth. Remember that your children are not your own, but are lent to you by the Creator. The advancement and diffusion of knowledge is the only guardian of true liberty. James Madison It does not matter how slowly you go, as long as you do not stop. If a man is as wise as a serpent, he can afford to be as harmless as a dove. Imagine your life is perfect in every respect. What would it look like? Brian Tracy It were indeed more happy and comfortable for a man to depart out of this world having lived all his life long clear from all falsehood, dissimulation, voluptuousness, and pride. But if this cannot be, Yet it is some comfort for a man joyfully to depart as weary and out of love with those, rather than to desire to live and to continue long in those wicked courses. Hath not yet experience taught thee to fly from the plague? For a far greater plague is the corruption of the mind than any certain change and distemper of the common air can be. This is a plague of creatures as they are living creatures but that of men as they are men or reasonable. Expect nothing. Appreciate everything. Be grateful for the little things in your life to find inner peace. Never compete with someone who has nothing to lose. Seek not the good in external things, seek it in yourselves. Epictetus Nothing is worth more than this day. Do not let yesterday use up too much of today.
conflict cannot survive without your participation.